Hi, I'm Jason. On my other channel, The Jason of All Trades, I make mostly sewing videos. And on this channel I do a wide variety of other stuff, and so I thought this would be a good place to share the construction of this custom tabletop I made for my industrial walking foot sewing machine. I didn't film every detail of the construction of this, uh, but I just wanted to give an overview for anyone who might be interested in how I did it, uh, in case maybe you want to try it yourself. I know almost nothing about woodworking, and I've never done a Dutch pour acrylic paint process before, uh, and I made this table, so if I can do it, anybody can. So in this video, I'm just going to give an overview of the process that I went through for making this tabletop. Um, I shot some footage of the construction, but this is not a tutorial or an in-depth uh, how-to on the construction of this. So basically the story is I needed to move this machine here to this space from my home. And in order to do that, uh, to make it easier, I ended up taking the machine and the motor, which is underneath here, uh, off the table and then disassembling the frame just to make it easier for me to carry because I didn't have anybody to help me. And uh, I have no friends. And then when I got it here and was going to put it back together, I thought, well, you know, it'd be kind of nice to maybe spray paint the frame uh, and make it look a little bit nicer. Uh, and so I did that, but the paint didn't stick very well because of, I think, sewing machine oil being impregnated into the frame. So I sent the frame out and had it sandblasted. And then I decided to buy different paint because I wanted a different color. And I disassembled the bobbin winder and painted it in great detail. And uh, so then I thought, well, this tabletop is not in such great shape. I mean, it's completely functional. It just, you know, it didn't look good. And I wanted to make this more of a feature. So I had some plywood laying around. And what I did was I took two pieces of three quarter inch plywood and glued those together and made a one and a half inch thick piece, which is the same thickness as that other tabletop was. And then uh, once that was glued up, I used the other pieces as a template, drew around all the openings and the exterior to get the size and cut it out. Again, I'm not a woodworker. Uh, I only had a jigsaw available to me to do the cutting. So these edges, I'm not gonna show you up close, but they're, they're jagged and, and they look terrible. Uh, I had a belt sander that I was gonna use to smooth those off and as soon as I turned it on, it broke. So, uh, and I just, I don't have the time or the money to go out and buy a new belt sander just for that. So they are what they are for now. This is my first try. I had to borrow a router to make the recess for where the machine sits into the table. That was the only tool that I, I didn't have and, and couldn't do it without it. So I had to borrow one of those. And then uh, for the top, I went back and forth on a couple of different options on what to do about the top, uh, you know, as far as whether to finish it somehow and leave the wood finish. Um, and I work in a community of artists. I'm surrounded by painters uh, where I work. Um, and one of them uh, exposed me to the Dutch pour method that I had not heard of before. And I did a little bit of YouTubing and stuff and it looks pretty simple. So I thought, well, that'd be kind of fun to try. Um, so I bought the cheapest acrylic paint I could buy. Uh, I followed a recipe for uh, thinning the paint to make it pourable, uh, and I just did everything by eye. It's, it's like one part paint to one part uh, a substance called Floetrol, and uh, I just eyeballed the measurements of that. Uh, I didn't have a hair dryer, so I used a heat gun to blow it around with, um, you know, I basically just winged it, and this was the end result. It looks fantastic to me. I, I really like how it turned out. Um, so, uh, and the, the colors, the intent was this blue is the same blue as the frame, and, uh, you know, wanted that to match, and then the yellow kind of calls the gold uh, accents from the bobbin winder and where the foot pedal is. So, uh, I'm super pleased with how it turned out. To make the finish more durable, I did an epoxy glaze coat. Um, and it, this is probably, maybe besides the jagged uh, cutting with the jigsaw, this is where more imperfections are visible in person. It's honestly kind of hard for me to make it look clear how, how bad it looks uh, on camera. So I'm not even gonna try. Just know that there are a number of imperfections 
there's dust and hair that got into the epoxy because I didn't put a tent over it when I did it. Uh, I did a lot of stuff wrong. And it still looks pretty awesome. Like, it, you know, if you scrutinize every detail, it has some issues, but it looks great. The one thing I could say, though, is uh, if, if you are going to try to do this yourself, I bought a one-quart size of the epoxy um, glaze coat, and I probably needed 15% more than that. Now, at least where I was purchasing mine, the next size up is a gallon, and I paid 30 bucks for the quart. I don't even remember what the gallon was, but it was a lot. Um, it was not worth it to me to go out and spend another $30 just to get that 15% more that I needed to make this perfect. But if I were going to do this again and really try to make it, like, really right, uh, for this industrial size table, probably uh, two quarts would have been good to have. There are some areas here where the finish is just really thin and, and splotchy. So. Anyway, after I poured the glaze coat and let it dry for 72 hours, I was able to reassemble the machine to the table. Uh, probably the hardest part of that was hanging the motor. There's probably a smarter way to do it, like putting the motor on with the tabletop upside down on another table or something, but I'm not that smart, so I held it over my face while trying to hang it up and almost dropped it onto my face. So if you were working by yourself with this stuff, that motor probably weighs 70 pounds, I'm guessing. I don't know, it's heavy, so uh, definitely use caution. Don't be dumb like me. Uh, I did put a new clutch in my clutch motor, and it feels significantly better to me. It's the first time I've used a clutch motor with a brand new clutch in it, and uh, Definitely runs really well now. Oh, for the frame, I used a Rust-Oleum industrial uh, spray paint. Uh, I didn't put a clear coat on it. I anticipate all of this to get scratched up and beaten and to look terrible at some point. And I'll see how long it lasts. And if it lasts a long time, well, that'll be great too. Anyway, uh, that's how I made this new tabletop and painted the base for this machine. Yes, this machine looks terrible compared to the table now. At some point, I would like to paint this machine, but I need this machine to be working right now, so uh, it has to stay as it is for a while. I hope you found that interesting. If you have questions about the process, feel free to leave a comment and I'll try to get back to you. This is my secondary YouTube channel. If you're a subscriber to my The Jason of All Trades channel, uh, and you're not a subscriber to this one, I occasionally post other things here that you may or may not find interesting. So if you're not a subscriber, then, you know, it can't hurt. Uh, and if you're not a subscriber to my main channel, and if you're into sewing at all, you should definitely check that out. Thanks for watching.